I rise with regret uh, to vote no on this nomination. Uh, you know, I attended this morning's transportation hearing with great interest, great expectations, uh, because I agree with my colleagues with respect to the nominee's experience and credentials. I have no question that Mr. Walder can do this job when you look at his resume. I have too many unanswered questions with respect to how he is going to do that job. And I'm very troubled with respect to what I experienced and we today experienced at that hearing. You know, I've heard the frustration of so many of my colleagues in government, both in the City Council in New York City and here in the Senate, both Democrat and Republican, with respect to not getting the sort of open dialogue between the MTA and the people. I heard when this body passed that MTA bailout, imposing two and a half billion dollars in new taxes and fees on the people in the MTA region, that this time it was going to be different, that there was going to be accountability, and that we were going to make sure that the MTA was going to be held accountable. What I witnessed at the hearing does not give me a, little, a lot of confidence that that, in fact, is the case. The MTA, like most authorities, doesn't want to answer questions. And we don't get too many answers. But there's usually a honeymoon period that lasts at least through the Senate nomination committee. We didn't have that even today. I asked Mr. Walder, for instance, whether or not he would consider or propose um, tolling the East River crossings as a way to address the MTA's budget shortfalls. He wouldn't say. I asked him whether or not he thought congestion pricing was the way he would go with respect to solving the MTA budget shortfall. He wouldn't say. I asked him whether he thought it was fair that the Verrazano Bridge back on Staten Island has a toll and that the East River Crossings doesn't. And he said that it wasn't really about fairness. In fact, Mr. Walder at this hearing, our hearing today, said that these specific issues should not be addressed today. This was not the time, this was not the place, that they would be, should be addressed later. He said, in fact, that these probably weren't the discussions for the MTA. I couldn't disagree more. Each of you is about to vote on whether or not to give someone a job that pays $372,000 per year at a time when the state budget is in crisis, the MTA budget and institution is in crisis, the New York City budget is in crisis. Is it too much to ask? of the person you're about to hire, what his plan is to address those problems? I think not. In fact, I think we're entitled to them. The riders in the region are entitled to those answers. The taxpayers in the region and throughout the state are entitled to have those answers. And I don't know why we had a hearing today and walked away without answers to those questions. You know, I asked Mr. Walder, given the uh, public outrage with respect to uh, compensation packages on Wall Street, whether or not given these trying times, he'd be willing to take the job for less than the $372,000 per year. And of course, and I don't blame him, he said no. But at least, at least, we should know what the plan is here 
before we vote. And what is of great disappointment to me is when I look at his resume and I look at his experience, I think of all the people out there, he's someone that may have some of those answers and those solutions. But for whatever reason, maybe, um, maybe the, the MTA uh, culture has already struck. Uh, maybe it was his experience back in the 80s. And by the way, I asked Mr. Walder whether or not he'd ever been to Staten Island. And he said that he was, but he doesn't remember when or where. And that might not upset many of you here in the chamber, but it bothers me. It bothers me greatly. 500,000 people on Staten Island, not an insignificant part of the MTA region. And I see some head shaking, and I'm not trying to be personal here, but you would think when, as was um, said during the hearing, that when you come to a job interview for a job this important, that you might want to kick the tires around, that you might want to take a look at the region, and you might want to come prepared to answer these types of questions. I think we're entitled to know that. And I'm greatly disappointed that we don't have the answers to these questions. Again, the MTA is in crisis. I don't expect that anyone would come to a hearing and have a magic answer or a magic bullet to solve all the problems uh, that the MTA is confronted by. But I do believe, I do believe that at least on day one, on day one, you would be willing to answer questions in a way that demonstrated that you understand that you need to have a working partnership with this legislative body and the government of the state and the taxpayers and the riders. And I've attended too many MTA hearings which were rightly described as dog and pony shows, where folks looked at their watches and waited for the meetings to end, and there was never any follow-up, and there was never any answer. And when I have someone who wants to be the chairman of that board, who comes before this Senate, who asks for our vote to give him a job that pays $372,000 a year, that he'd be willing to answer those questions in a forthright way. So I don't think today is a good start. Of course, I'm hopeful and optimistic that it will have a better ending. But it just doesn't look good to me, and there are too many unanswered questions. And so I regret, regret that I will be voting no.